If you'd like online business explained to you in a way that you can actually understand, go to latenightim.com forward slash explain. It's completely free and I made it just for you. Now, how about an episode? Episode 213. Late Night Internet Marketing. This week on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast, we talk all about that shiny object syndrome and the way it makes you feel and what you can do about it. All this and more on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. The Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. You've been working for somebody else, but you want a business to run yourself. You want to know how to start and where to begin. Can you get out your comfort zone, my Broadcasting late at night from a little studio in the big state of Texas, your host, host, Mark Mason. Hey, 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 how is everyone doing? Holy cow, it has been snowing (laughs) at the little studio in Dallas, Texas. How are you? I hope you are warm and safe. I have been relatively safe over the last week, but not all that warm. In case you haven't been watching the news, it's been snowmageddon here in Texas. And for all of you that are in you know different parts of the country and the world where it snows all the time, I know you're laughing at me. I saw a really funny meme on TikTok this week where there were places in the world where it snowed and they had snow plows uh, clearing the streets, you know, these armies of snow plows. But in Texas, they had like a toddler with a snow shovel. That's that's pretty much how we feel down here when it snows. We're generally not very well prepared. And usually that lack of preparation here in Texas is limited to bad driving. You know, we get ice on the streets. We don't have the right infrastructure to get the ice off the streets. And Texas drivers don't have a lot of experience in the snow. And that usually makes a mess. Well, this time we had really bad weather. We had a catastrophic a chain reaction car accident uh, in Fort Worth, which is just down the road from where I live here in Dallas and people died. And I mean, it's just terrible. And then the cold weather collapsed the power grid in Texas. And so many of us, including those of us living here at the little studio in Dallas were without power for days. So it turns out it's relatively difficult to record, edit and publish a podcast without electricity. (laughs) It turns out that podcasting requires electricity. So we've worked around that a little bit. The power's back up. And my biggest struggle during this time was to keep the swimming pool running, to keep the pool pumps from freezing in the presence of power outages, because normally you would keep the pool pumps from freezing by running them. And when you don't have electricity, it's also really hard to run pool pumps. And so we had all of that kind of problem. And in the meantime, I have been working on my drop shipping activities here. I'm going to have an update for you on that next week. Probably uh, if all things go the way I'm expecting, maybe even first sales to report for you next week and to tell you what that's looking like. I'm still very bullish on this uh, process. And I've got some alternatives for you that I'm also going to discuss next week. If you're interested in starting a drop shipping business, but you you didn't want to, you, you need simplicity and you weren't ready to bite off a $3,500 course, which I totally get, I've got a much, much more affordable option for you that I'm evaluating now that I'm going to talk to you about next week that I think you'll be very interested in. And it's so interesting. One of the things that, that's interesting about it, and I don't want to tell you too much because I haven't finished assessing it, but there's a high school student that took this course and started making money right away part time while he was working on his schoolwork. I think that's a really cool story. I'll share all that with you 
next week on the show in episode 214. But today, I want to talk about something that is really personal for me, and I think probably personal for a lot of you, and that is this combination and feeling of overwhelm and shiny object syndrome where you, you, you're working on something, you know what you want to do, and then you get distracted by something else. And then on top of that, in the back of your mind, you're worried about all this other stuff that you're not getting done. And you just feel like as an entrepreneur, a solo entrepreneur or a side hustler that you just have all of these ideas and things you want to do. And, but you're never, you're never really getting enough of that done. And that's certainly something that I've experienced personally. And it was really brought home for me recently when I got in a discussion with a friend of mine, Chris, who is struggling with the same things. I asked Chris to record this question that she posed in one of the mastermind groups that I'm in. And I asked her to pose it so that I could answer it here on the show and we could talk about it today because I thought it would be helpful for you guys. Let's hear from Chris. And now, and now, it's time to hear what listeners just like you are thinking. Late night listener feedback. 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 Hey, Mark. My name is Chris Racinos, and I am the CEO and founder of Nurse Leader Network, where we provide tools and a community for nurses to grow in their careers without sacrificing the important things in life. And I am having a hashtag struggle with trying to fit all of this in. Um, so my question is, you know, I work with a group of folks that are helping me to stay on track with my accountabilities and I can't stay on top of my to-do list. I frequently am missing out on my commitments in favor of the next shiny object. I'm in the middle right now of launching a few memberships. I'm writing a book. I'm hosting a conference. And that's on top of everything else that, you know, I do in terms of my podcast and my day-to-day with work. I, I know that all of these things are really needed and I have so much joy um, at doing each of these things, but I just can't fit it in anymore. Um, I'm really looking at figuring out how to do better with time management. We are in the process of hiring a VA that's going to help with some of my podcast editing and scheduling, but it's still not going to give us enough time for me to fit it all in. And so, Mark, please help me with how do I stop with the next shiny object syndrome? How do I complete my task? Because I'm good at getting them started. I'm good at having a vision and I can't get them to the finish line. I'd appreciate any help you have. Thanks. Bye. Okay. So I don't know if you're totally like me, but boy, this question from Chris really resonates, right? I mean, here she is. She's incredibly successful. And I guess maybe that's the first thing to talk about here. Chris is working on a bunch of really successful projects in addition to having a really successful career prior to this. She's been an executive in large healthcare companies. She's on uh, the teaching staff and faculty of various universities. She's a nurse educator. She has more letters after her name than you can possibly imagine. The end of her name on her business card is like an alphabet soup of certifications. Okay. So this is a very successful person. And so the lesson here just right out of the gate is even incredibly successful people who seemingly have it all together, the people that you admire, that you're looking up to and saying, wow, that person doesn't have any of my problems. They've got it all together. Those people, they have these issues too. So that's the first thing that I, I took away from, from Chris is, wow, I mean, everybody goes through this. And so Chris says some things in her, in her statement that are super interesting. And I thought we could break those down into a couple of categories. But first, let me offer you an idea. And the idea is that every one of us, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. You and me and Chris, we all have 
the same amount of time. And so the question is, how are we going to decide to use it, right? How, what, what do we think is the best way to use this time? And are we being intentional about how we do it so that we get the outcomes that we want? And I think that's, that's the thing that we want to talk about here. Are you getting the outcomes that you want with the time that you have available? Are you satisfied with those outcomes? And do you have peace of mind around that? Do you, are you sure you're working on the right thing? And do you feel good about the amount of progress that you're making? Do you have the right expectations? Those are the kind of questions that we want to ask to get our head right around this shiny object syndrome problem. And then I think the other thing that we want to do today is we want to get clear on some tactics that we can use starting today to help us deal with this in 2021 so that when we finish the year, we feel excellent about the things that we got done because we didn't get distracted. Okay, so here we go. Basically, the way I want to approach this is break down the things that Chris said and respond to them. And the very first thing she says when she introduces herself is that she is basically teaching balance for nurse leaders. She provides the nursing community with tools that allow them to grow their careers without sacrificing the important things in their life. And, you know, really, this is just a special case of the thing that Chris is facing. And I think, you know, we all want to be able to build and grow things without messing up the other things that are really important to us. And when you turn that around in the context of Chris and her business, the question, like the question that her nurse leaders are asking is, how can she get done the things that she wants to get done without messing up the most important things? Now, in the case of nurse leaders, the presumption is the most important thing is family and home life or health or whatever else is going on there. It's a work-life balance question, but it's really the same question for Chris, right? When you narrow the context down to just her business, the question you've got to ask is, what is the most important thing that absolutely has to be done? And that's the very next thing Chris alludes to in her statement. She says, Mark, how do I fit everything in? And my simple answer is either that you don't because it's maybe it's physically impossible to fit it all in or you shouldn't. And with regard to shouldn't, the, the, the authoritative book on this is this book called The One Thing by Gary Keller and uh, Jay Papazan, I think. Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of really great insights into that book. There, the book is very marketable because it's got a nice poppy title, but it's a deep book. And there are some really great takeaways in that book. And all of you that are struggling with these kind of problems of around multitasking and shiny objects and not getting things done, I encourage you to read this book and you will find that Gary and Jay will tell you that extraordinary results are related to how narrowly you can focus. And for a lot of us, oh my gosh, we're going in exactly the opposite direction. I'm the world's worst. You know, I'm I'm working on affiliate marketing and I'm doing drop shipping and I've got this podcast and I've got some side projects with other people. I'm the worst. I'm an authority on lack of focus, right? I mean, I'm the guy. And so I read this book and I really agree. And it's helped me a lot. And I've jettisoned a lot of stuff as a result of this, because one of the things that you learn in the book is it's better to do a few things for huge effect than to suffer the side effects of doing a bunch of things. When you do a lot of things, you get these side effects like Chris is describing where you just simply can't get everything done and you have that mental pressure, that psychological situation where you're not satisfied. You're you're unhappy, you feel guilty, you don't like it because you're not you you're not reaching, you're not completing the things that you want to complete. And so Part of that has to do with deciding what the most important thing is. I think you, you, if you look in history, you find that great achievers, they're always working from a clear sense of priority. You think of these guys like Thomas Edison, who has you know, this clear sense of priority 
to make the light bulb work and is trying thousands of times. He's not working on a bunch of other projects. He's focused on that thing. Or Alexander Hamilton with the Federalist Papers, you know, for you Hamilton musical fans out there, Hamilton was uniquely focused on writing these essays to help defend and protect the U.S. Constitution. It, it turned out to be his life's work. That was his deep focus. And so I think that's great. And one of the things that's said in this book, the one thing is, I think this is where I got this, purpose without priority is powerless. Purpose without priority is powerless. So you may have a purpose, but what's your priority? What is the, the most important thing that you're working on? And so, Chris, I would challenge you and I challenge all of my listeners to, to ask the question, if I could only do one thing, really could only do one project, one absolutely critical thing, what would that thing be? What is it? And, and, and write that down. And then maybe if you want to understand what the second thing is. And I would say by the, th by the time you get down to thing three or four, you're probably past the cut line. And that's something that we all need to make sure that we're clear on is what's the thing that is most impactful, most important that I care the most about. And if I could only get one thing done, what would that thing be? It's not this tyranny of, oh, I, I'm, I've got to do it all. You don't. You don't have to do it all. You get to pick. I would encourage you to know what the one thing is that you would do. Now, if you don't know that, it's probably because you don't know why you're doing it. And re re I've talked about why a lot. I have a, a video that I am proud of that I'd like to send you to at late night. I am.com forward slash why, where I spoke at the free, the dream conference. It's cliff Ravenscraft's conference in Tennessee uh, in 2019 on the topic of finding your why, how to find your purpose and why that's important. And so if you go to late night, I am.com forward slash why that will take you directly to that video. But I would say that it's hard for you to understand why something is super important in your life and business. If you, if you don't know why you're doing it in the first place. And so I want you to go watch that video. But I think for Chris, she's, I, I've talked to Chris and I know she's well in touch with why she does the things that she does, particularly around nursing. She's a passionate person in this space about teaching, giving back to the nursing community, about leading nurses and help bring them up. She's been in that capacity as an educator, as a, as a leader in a corporation, as a podcaster, as a person who runs conferences around this topic. She knows why she's doing what she's doing. And so I think inside that, it's also important to understand the things that she's doing to support that larger vision. Why is she doing each one? And, and I think it's a great place to start. And I'm very happy for Chris that she says something like, I have so much joy doing these things. I don't know where to start. I think that's an awesome problem to have. And I hope some of you can enjoy that problem as well. So then Chris makes a statement that she's looking to be better at time management. And to her, I would say, I would just stop using the phrase time management. I would manage outcomes, right? Things take however long they're going to take. I would make sure that I'm managing the outcomes. And the way to do this and to get out of the tyranny of time management and to-do lists that seem so infinite, you never get through to everything, is to first be a maker and then be a manager second. So make sure that whatever you're doing, whether it's, and sometimes I literally mean first in the day, but before you start ticking things off on your to-do list, make sure that you're doing the parts of your business that are creating and the ways that you can un uniquely contribute value, right? You want to be a maker first and a manager second. And I think a lot of times that helps and it can allow you to work on the high leverage parts of your business so that you can get to the next thing that Chris says, which is 
She's thinking about hiring a virtual assistant for podcast editing and scheduling. And I think this is a great idea. I mean, I've be, I've been using virtual assistants for over a decade and whether you're just using someone occasionally on Fiverr or you're using someone from Upwork or you have an actual employee or it's a high school kid down the street, having someone to help you is really great. And one of the things about time management, if we're going to use that phrase or this idea of working with people and dealing with tasks is always be applying the four D's when something comes to you. If first of all, when you're doing your deep work and you're focusing on the things that you absolutely need to get done, you don't entertain interruptions for things coming onto your to-do list for as much as possible during that time when you're in maker mode and you're doing the important work that you need to be doing, you don't, you don't deal with the fact that someone wants to add something to your to-do list. That's just not something that you're going to deal with. And I've talked several times about how you decide what those very important pieces of work are. When we've talked about the 12 week year, which is another book that I love, we've talked about taking the most important things that you need to get done, breaking them down into things that you need to get done essentially in this quarter and in this month and in this week so that you know what you're working on Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday. You're going to do this important work on the thing that you've decided is most important to you. If nothing else gets done today, you're going to make sure that gets done, right? That's the thing we've talked about in previous podcast episodes. When things are coming onto your to-do list and people are handing you stuff and life is throwing you stuff, I think it's always important to apply the four D's, which are, if it's a small thing and you can do it, just do it. Don't even take the time to write it down, right? A lot of times I, I do this with my wife. If she says, hey, would you later, would you remember to take the trash out? If I'm not in my deep work space I don't even bother writing it down. I just get up and take the trash out. That has two great effects. One is it's done. It's accomplished. And two is I don't have to take any time to write it down. I don't need any mental space to remember how to do it. I don't have to stop what I'm doing later and do it because I'm running out of time. It's done. So if it takes less than a minute, I'm, I'm on it. It's over. I'm done. And then it's done. So the first D is due. The second thing is to delete it. One of the things that we don't do is we don't say no enough. Michael Hyatt talks about saying no and I think and how powerful that is. And he talks about uh, making a yes, no, yes sandwich where someone asks if you will do something. Hey, Mark, will you promote my product or will you come, uh, you know, interview me on my show or whatever? Right. And you say, man, thank you so much for thinking about me. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that, but I really wish you well in that endeavor. I think you're doing great work. Good luck. Uh, Yes, no, yes, right? You know, tell them, thank them for the ask. Tell them you're flattered they thought of you. Be completely unequivocal when you say no. Some of you don't know how to do that. Some of you will say, "Uh, I really, I'm really busy right now. Excuse code, excuse code, excuse code. And maybe check back with me in three weeks and maybe we can do it. And you say that because you don't want to say no. Just say no. You, you, don't, you don't owe anyone an explanation. You don't have to say, you don't have to tell people why you're saying no. I have to explain this to my mom all the time. It's like, mom, just say no. You don't, you don't need to tell everybody why you're saying no. You just say no. Say, hey, thank you very much. I won't, I'm not going to do that. Good luck, right? I mean, I think that's a skill that we all need to develop. And that's something you can use to get stuff off of your to-do list is to delete it. And then a third tactic that we can use for stuff that is just not important. And there are no consequences if we don't do it. And who cares? It's just to defer it, right? Say, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. And that's fine. And I, I think we need to do more of that too. You know what happens when you defer stuff that is truly not important? Now, I'm not talking about deferring your income taxes. If you defer your income taxes for too long, the IRS, at least in the United States, will come get you, right? I'm not talking about deferring really important stuff. I'm talking about deferring 
the hundred pounds of inconsequential crap that comes to you all the time, just, you know, don't worry about it right now. And especially low energy tasks that don't require a lot of your mental capacity, like opening up your, your physical mail, 75% of which is offers to extend your home or car warranty. You, you don't need to do that right now. Defer it. Don't, don't let yourself be distracted by this inconsequential stuff right now because you want to be busy doing the work that's going to allow you to achieve your goals. And then finally, I would say, and this gets to Chris, delegate it. And, you know, what you can do is over time, you can start to build up the number of things that you have set out expectations for how that can be done, whether it's with a VA or a child or a business partner, you can give those people latitude to, uh, to, to solve problems and do stuff. A lot of people tell me, well, Mark, it takes me longer to explain to someone how I want something done than to actually do it. I'll give you an example, social media graphics for my podcast. I do social media graphics for my podcast. I could specify what kind of images do I want and what font do I want? How do I want to look and what colors do I want? I could do all that. Instead, I just say, make me a graphic that I can use on Facebook. And you know what happens when you allow people to, to be creative and take responsibility for things? You find out that a lot of people are better than you at a lot of stuff. And, you know, particularly for me in graphics design, everyone is better at, than me at graphics design. So if you're, if you delegate and you allow people the opportunity to learn how to do things, the opportunity to express themselves, the opportunity to have responsibility for tasks, the feeling of trust that comes when you just say, Hey, just take care of it. And guess what? If you don't like it, then you just tell them, Hey, what you did was great, but I really don't like the color red. Can you use blue next time? And next time it's fine. So delegate. So the four D's do delete, defer and delegate. And I do encourage everyone to start thinking in terms of this last D, what is it in your business that you can actually start to delegate and let other people have an opportunity? There are people all over the world that need meaningful work to do. And so let's help with that too. Look, the more money you make, the more successful you are, the more stuff you get done, the more people you can hire to do meaningful work so they can feed their families. So let's get that started and get that done. Now, the last thing Chris says is she is good at starting, good at vision, but she's not good at finishing projects. And she says it like that's a problem, right? I mean, that's the implication is, hey, I'm not good at finishing things. That's what she says. And, you know, so the first thing here is this is a mindset issue. First of all, I would say Chris is a visionary leader. Chris would say, I have some good ideas, but I can't finish everything. You know, that there's a difference there. Okay. So the first thing I'd say is always be careful about the mindset that you have around your own capabilities and make sure that you're not creating these self-fulfilling prophecies around the, your behaviors, right? Being visionary and having amazing ideas and being able to lead to get those ideas done is an incredibly valuable skill. Not enjoying or not being the best at taking care of the details, first of all, that may just be, I mean, compared to what? I mean, I guarantee you, I mean, you have a PhD in nursing, you can take care of details, right? You can't get a PhD if you can't execute and take care of details. So I reject the statement from Chris and from most of you, right? Most of you have accomplished things that require attention to detail and completion, right? We all have. And so you can, you can do it, but that may not be your amazing strength. And in those cases, I think most of the really successful people that I know that are amazingly successful, like Amy Porterfield, Pat Flynn, people like this in these spaces, my buddy, Michael Stelzner, 
they have operation managers that are managing execution. And you just think about it. And Chris, you know, she's been a C-suite leader in large medical corporations. You don't have one person who's doing all these pieces, right? You have visionary leadership in the C-suite and you have some accounting types in the C-suite that are counting beans and you usually have an operations manager and usually, especially in Chris's world, someone who's responsible for compliance and Chris herself responsible for the most valuable resource in the hospital, which is nursing, right? So I think it's okay. And I think in addition to a VA, what you can start to imagine is getting some time from someone who can help you manage the execution of projects as you build a team. Now, it's hard to swallow, right? Because you you don't have a team. You're the execution person right now. And I think it's a it's a little bit of a vicious cycle that you can reverse by starting to delegate more and more. I mean, for your next podcast, let's get that thing edited by somebody else. And if you, your next YouTube video, let's have that thumbnail made by somebody else. Let's let somebody else post the video to YouTube. There's no reason for you to sit there and watch the little circle go around while the video uh, uploads to YouTube. You can do higher leverage things in your business. So. What does this all boil down to? I think it boils down to a couple of things. One is know what the one or two most critical things are that you're doing and make sure you get them done and know why that you're doing them. I think that's really critical and try to push off the tyranny of all the extra stuff that's coming up. That's getting in the way of that by doing your most important stuff first, putting the big rocks in first, as Covey would say, and then applying these four D's of do, delegate, defer, and delete, and making sure that that's getting done that way. Get as much help as you can afford to get as soon as you can afford to get it. So that's really critical. And then I guess the last thing I would say, and what I would leave you with is be okay with the fact that these most important things are enough. Be okay with the fact that you have 75 ideas, but right now you're only executing on three of them, but you're executing on the most important three. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I mean, how many people can really say that, that they're working on the one or two or three most important things in their life? I mean, I think that's amazing. And you say, well, people tell me, but I, but I have all these ideas. Great. Let's put a place for those. Let's create a list in a sauna or in a notepad somewhere in ClickUp for me called a a someday list. And just let's make all of those things. So I have I have so many things on that list for someday. And most of them, quite frankly, I'm never going to get to, but they're not taking up my mental energy because they're on that list. And if I'm ever bored and looking for something to do or I need a creative, some creative input. I can go back and look at the that list, that someday list. But for right now, I kind of have a contract with myself that if it's on the someday list, it doesn't get worked on right now. And if I get a new idea, I consider saying, you know, making my yes, no, yes sandwich on that. I give that very careful consideration. I tell you another thing that you can do in this regard, because I know this feeling, right? You You hear about this new thing, you get a sales letter. You, you've got this you know, new piece of software that just came out that you want to try, whatever it is. There's, there's two things that I can suggest. One is never buy anything until Friday. <laughs> and I, I've said this before on the podcast, but you know, most of your distractions that you come up with, especially in the internet marketing space, involve investing in a new opportunity or a new piece of software or a new solution or a new next shiny object thing. And my suggestion to you is just don't, don't do that until Friday, put it on a list of things to think about on Friday. And most of the time by, by the time Friday comes around that impulse to do that thing will have dissipated enough for you to make a good decision about whether or not you need to do it. Sometimes you will have totally forgotten about it. Um, The second thing I would say is avoid the temptation 
to think 47 steps ahead in the project that you're doing when uh, you really just need to focus on what you need to do now. So for example, if you're working on a course, there's no reason for you to go off and take a course on Facebook ads. You have nothing to sell. So you can take the Facebook ads course when you have a course to sell. And I, you know, people, oh, Mark, I, I need to get ready for that. No, you don't. What you need is a course. You need a finished course. So finish your course or your product or your project or whatever. And then when you get to the marketing, well, let's worry about the marketing when we get to the marketing. And that's something that I like to refer to as just in time learning. That's another thing that you can do to kind of help manage this shiny object syndrome is to turn off the input on stuff that is not part of what you're doing right now. So I hope that's helpful to you, Chris, but even more than that, because, you know, I would have been happy to have a personal conversation with my friend, Chris. I hope this is helpful to all of you listening to the podcast. And I want to thank Chris for her, for sharing her hashtag struggle bus stuff with us uh, here on the podcast. And I know there are a lot of nurses that listen to this show. My, my oldest daughter listens to the show and she's a nurse, although she tells me uh, that she prefers true, true crime podcasts over my internet marketing podcast, which is a little hurtful, but yeah, I get it. But my oldest daughter is a nurse, but if uh, you know, if you are a nurse or you know, a nurse, Tell them about Chris over at nurseleadernetwork.com. She would love to see you there. She's got a lot of great things to offer for her tribe. Um, and she's an amazing person. So thanks, Chris. Thanks, all of y'all. And we'll talk to you next week where I'm going to update you on all my progress on evaluating what's going on in the drop shipping world today. Ciao. Listening to the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Be sure to visit LNIMPodcast.com today to leave feedback for Mark. Download special bonus content, access the show notes, and more. See you there. Until then, go and make some great progress on your internet business one night at a time. One night at a time. Holy cow. Okay. Snow Mageddon. My gosh. That's the thing. So we got five or six inches of snow. And yes, I know that's not a big deal. But the, the big thing was having temperatures near zero with no power. So I, you know, it's a little studio in Dallas. Dallas doesn't see zero hardly ever. I mean, these are record low temperatures and not having any power. That's a seriously compromising situation, you know, particularly both in terms of safety for people who maybe don't have the resources or maybe they're elderly, they don't have the physical capability to take care of themselves in difficult weather conditions. That's very scary. It's also uh, difficult from a, from a personal property standpoint because things like pool pumps, they freeze up without electricity and water lines in your house. I mean, normally your water lines might not freeze because inside the house it's 70 something degrees. But if you have no how, no heat inside the house that's going into those walls, those pipes can freeze pretty readily. And I spent a lot of time going from neighbor's house to neighbor's house, helping them turn off their water if their pipes were freezing and water was going all over the inside of their house because their pipes had broken. Several times we had people reaching out on Facebook, looking for help because they didn't know how to turn their water off or they didn't have the right tools to turn their water off. So if you're, you know, if you live in a home, I'm an engineer, so I have tools stacked to the ceiling, but if you're in a home and you don't know how to turn the water off, that's a bad thing because water moves quickly and you can get a lot of it in a very short period of time. If you have a, you know, three quarter inch water line break in your home, that's going to pump out a lot of water at 40 pounds per square inch or whatever the water's coming in at. That's a lot of water in your house very quickly. So my advice to you for today, if you don't know how to turn off the water in your house, make sure you get that solved this week because not turning off the water when your house is flooding, that's a bummer deal.
You know, it's really interesting. And as an engineer, I understand this, that, you know, there are a lot of complexities in politics and finger pointing in this power problem that we had here in Texas. Is it because we're relying on green energy? Is it because we've got too much deregulation? Is it because people are idiots? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of discussion about who's to blame. You know, everyone in our current society, everyone wants to blame everybody else about everything that happens. No one takes personal responsibility for anything. But as an engineer, I understand quite clearly that this is a, is a really kind of a tough corner case, extended very, very record low temperatures, including ice that caused some engineering problems that we weren't prepared to deal with. And as an engineer, my thing would be, well, how do we keep this from happening again? And, and that's, that's a question that's answerable. You can keep things from happening again. In engineering, we call those corrective actions that we take to keep problems from happening. But then you have to answer the next question is, are you willing to pay for this? And one of my one of the things that amuses me is that the same people that are on Facebook that are ranting and raving about uh, the effects of deregulation and how that made our power grid vulnerable are the exact same people that have these competitive electrical contracts, don't want monopolies because they don't want high prices. They're, they don't even understand that they caused the problem. So it's all very interesting. So that's what's going on here in Texas. Late night internet marketing. Hey, it's Mark again. I wanted to tell you one more time about this absolutely free resource that I have for helping people who are trying to get the big picture for internet marketing actually get started and understand what all their choices are. If that's not you, there's no more content. You can skip to the end. But if you're someone who came to this podcast because you're searching for how to get started online and you just can't cut through all the noise, I get it. That was me in 2007 when I was trying to get started. There were so many people throwing offers at me that I really couldn't even understand what all the different business models were. I couldn't understand how money moved around on the internet. And I couldn't really get a grip on what direction I wanted to go in so I could figure out how to move forward. I've created a free video resource for you just for that purpose at latenightim.com forward slash explain. In several short videos, I just explained to you what internet marketing is all about and what online business is all about and the different options that you have for starting an online business. There's nothing to buy there. You just sign up for access and you get the videos just like that. So if that's interesting to you, or if you know someone who's in a same situation, send them that link late night, forward slash explain. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what people are thinking that are in the exact same position that I was in more than a decade ago in 2007. In some ways, it seems like yesterday. And in some ways, it seems like an entire lifetime ago. Again, that's late night. I am.com forward slash explain. Late night internet mom. 